The Glendale Road Church of Christ proudly presents a weekly exploration of the Word of our living God. This is It Is Written with Minister Jason Hart. Last night I was scrolling through the Facebook feeds, uh, just seeing some, some of the things that uh, my buddies and friends were all up to on, uh, during this past weekend. There was a family that lived in Paris several years ago that uh, our family were, were real good friends with, and good friends with Bill and Ann Looney, too. And I don't know if any of you would know Mike and Diane Wimberly. They had a son by the name of Matt. Matt was a couple of years younger than myself. Matt had uh, posted a story last night, a, a warning. They were driving evidently into a, a supermarket parking lot and they came across this vehicle. This vehicle was double parked. It was straddling the line. There was no doubt that whoever was driving this vehicle had purposefully parked in that spot and took up two places. Have you ever known somebody that, like that? Like that? Don't want anybody to put a car ding in my car door, so I'll straddle the line and take up two car spaces. Well, he said that he had said a few things in the car about that person who had taken up two parking spots. And he rattled on about someone who would take up space of two parking spots. Well, they get out of the car... And evidently, the man who had parked that car was walking in their direction. And Matt has two children. One of them is a four-year-old. And the four-year-old speaks up and says, Daddy, there he is. There's the man who parked in those two spaces. Don't you just love having kids? You know, it's kind of easy to be bold, to be outspoken, to be daring even, uh, when we are within our little compartments, isn't it? A very serious question to ask you, are you bold or are you simply subtle? Maybe we can think that we are bold, I like to think of myself as being bold, but most of the times it's because I'm up here on this, this big stage. You know, I'm able to, to stand behind this word with your backing and your confidence. And it's easy for me to be bold in a place like this. It's easy to be confident whenever we are around people of like minds and like faith. People who have a desire and a longing that is harmonious with our own. That's easy to do that. But is that really being bold or is that simply being subtle? I think that's a question that we all need to ask ourselves, a question that we all need to answer for ourselves. Because what happens whenever we get outside of these walls? What happens whenever we step outside of this particular fellowship, whether it be inside of these walls or someplace else? I'm so thankful that Nora and Karen just returned from Guyana. I know there were some other people that were down there on that same trip. And whenever we go on trips like that, it's interesting how we can become bold because we're in a different environment. I remember the trip that Jennifer and I took to the San Blas Islands. That was one of the places that Jennifer's mother loved going more than anywhere else. And we took that trip with her father. It was a medical mission trip. Tim Parrish and I had the opportunity to go around and visit some of the villages among the, uh, the Kuna Indians. And we would study with some of the locals who could speak their language. And I remember we were in a study and there was a bit of confusion. And the individual could speak just a little bit of, of English. And I just couldn't, I couldn't help myself but to think about Ananias as we were in that study. And um, when Ananias had told, told Saul, why do you tarry, arise and be baptized? There was a stool there, I stood up on the stool, right over there's water. And that's where we did all the baptism, baptizing was in the ocean. What's keeping you from doing that? 
It's easy to be bold and to be confident when we're outside. Maybe somebody doesn't know us and we're in a different arena. But what about our typical everyday lives? What about when we step in to our school places where a belief in God is questioned, if not criticized? Where are we when it, and, and how do we react when Christianity itself and its belief system is degraded? Do we choose then to be more like Peter as he was warming himself by the campfire? Or do we choose to be more like Peter as he was standing before those officials after speaking on Solomon's portico? I cannot help but to speak. Are we really bold or are we just subtle? I think about Peter in that circumstance. We're going to come back to that passage at the close of our lesson today. But I think about Peter when they were in the garden. Remember, Peter, Jesus had been praying in the garden and, and Judas brought a band of soldiers, probably, maybe about 600 men. And they came to arrest Jesus. And that's when Peter took out that broad sword and he chopped off Malchus's ear. Wow, what... Boldness did Peter have? <laughs> you know, I think about how bold Peter was and how confident he must have been. And maybe sometimes we look at him and think, wow, that was just dumb. But let's think about who, you know, Peter was standing next to the man who had stilled the storm or, uh, of the Sea of Galilee. Here was the man who had raised Lazarus from the dead. He was standing next to the one who could have called on 12 legions of angels to destroy the world. You know, if there was ever any a bit of confidence, you would have it right then. Well, I'm standing next to Jesus. But later when he was standing next to a fire, when he had to resort to his own devices, his own strength, his own energy, he simply said, I do not know Jesus. Are you truly bold? Or is it really just a subtleness? When we look throughout the Scriptures, we see a number of ways in which God desires that we be bold, that we be strong, that we be daring. I want to share with you seven, and I want to deal with them very briefly because I want to turn our attention back to Acts chapter 4 for the close of our lesson. Preach the Word. Should we preach the Word in boldness? Now, no, when we think about boldness t- today, a lot of times we think about people who are tactless. There is, there's no place in the life of the Christian to be tactless when dealing with other people, to speak the truth in love. To preach in season, to preach out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and with doctrine. Now we may be perceived as being intolerant and as tactless, but the encouragement that is given to us is to preach the Word. And there's only two times that we're supposed to preach, in season and out of season. The question is, are we preaching it and are we preaching it with boldness? What about our relationship to the world? Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. What does Paul teach us there? This is probably one of our favorite passages of Scripture. He said, I beseech you, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or your reasonable worship. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. A continuous transformation in our lives. 
A growing sanctification in which we grow to become holier and holier every single day and we're maturing into the fullness of, of Christ our Lord. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 says, Do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. That which is of the world is not of the Father. That's not supposed to be the type of life that we are living. So are we bold in rejecting the worldliness that is around us? Do you remember how Jesus talked to Satan? Do you remember how Jesus, whenever he would, after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted three times by the devil? It's found in Matthew chapter 4. And finally, when he gave him that last temptation, what did Jesus tell him? Get away from me, Satan. He told him to go away. That was a, that was a bold move. That was an entity that was not of this physical earth. That was not of a physical element. Something that was greater than what we can touch and see with our very hands, yet he said, get away from me. Jesus talked about that exact same boldness as he speaks in that exaggeration, that hyperbole, and he says, when your eye or your foot or your, your hand causes you to, to sin, cut it off and throw it away. That's a boldness that it takes for us to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to let it hold me down. I'm not going to let it pull me away from my God. I want to put a stop to it now and then throw it away. That takes boldness to do that. Preach the Word takes boldness to reject worldliness. takes boldness to, to stand for the truth. Our labor in the Lord is never in vain. We be steadfast and immovable. Always trusting in the Lord. He will guide us. Jesus says, if you abide in my word, then you are my disciple as indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We should boldly stand for the truth because it is through the truth that we can be sanctified. John chapter 17, verse 17. Now some in the world may resist that truth. And we get into this little pity party a lot about, oh, woe is, woe is the church, woe is Christianity because of the way people are treating Christians today, the way people are talking about Christians today, the way people look at me because I'm trying to be a Christian. Folks, we've got it easy. We have a group right now, 10 individuals that Barry had prayed for, and I'm so thankful that he did, that are down in Haiti right now. In a country that so desperately needs Jesus. And they are in the midst of a number of individuals who do not like Christianity. They're in the midst of individuals and people within a nation who would not think twice about persecuting those who are Christians. We've got it easy. It's not to say that it's not tough. I'm not trying to downplay your friends who think differently of you or people in our society or perhaps even teachers in our schools who look down upon a belief in God. I'm not trying to downplay that at all. I know it's tough. But a consideration of what other Christians are dealing with all around the world, we've got it easy. And it's nothing that is new. When Jesus came into the world, even the world that He made, the world did not know Him. Even as He came into His own, His own received Him not. Did Jesus ever back down? Or did He continue to speak the truth? Whether the truth was accepted by those who loved Him, and loved Him because He spoke simple truth, or even if there were individuals who despised and rejected Him, and eventually crucified Him. He still spoke truth. So we can stand for truth. We can be bold. We can be different. We can be abnormal, which is not a bad thing. We can be unique individuals. 
Be bold in leading God's people. Now the story from Exodus chapter 18 verses 13 to 21 is a very unique passage. I guess there could be some similarities between Exodus chapter 18 and what you find in Acts chapter 6. When well, Exodus chapter 18, Moses was trying to lead the people and people were coming to him asking for advice. They were coming to him, asking him questions. He would give them advice. He would give them counsel. And he would sit there all day long dealing with people coming to him. And his father-in-law, Jethro, had come along to join them. And Jethro was back at the side and he was observing this. Jethro looked upon Moses and said, what you are doing does not make sense. You're not able to do what you were supposed to do as a leader for God's people because you're dealing with all of these little things. Why don't you appoint other leaders? Leaders who in the eyes of God are holy men. They won't take bribes from other people. Men who you can delegate authority to. And that's exactly what Moses did. And Moses was able to deal with greater matters. Taking matters of the children of Israel before God rather than dealing just with the people and their petty arguments. Their petty things. Moses was able to be a shepherd because of that. But what we need is for people to be leaders. What we need is for individuals within the church, just like the men that were eventually appointed to help Moses, we need men to be able to step up and say, I can be a leader. Now, I may not be a shepherd, but I can still be a leader. I can take responsibility upon myself and do work that needs to be done right here for the good of the work with the Glendale Road Church. And greater than that, for the universal capacity of God's kingdom. We don't just need the men to step up, we need the ladies to step up too. There's a rightful place for you to be leaders in the church, isn't there? Of course there is. Just as there are right places for men to be leaders within the church, there are right places for women to be leaders too. This past week we had a number of ladies who took time away from their busy lives to teach individuals who are in their most impressionable ages of their lives. Now you tell me that that is not a form of leadership. To guide them and direct them and to teach them to come to a greater love of God. I am so thankful for what you have done. For what you have given. To be able to help children like my own to have a greater appreciation for God and all of His wonderful works. We can be bold in leading God's people. What are some other ways that we can be bold in for God? To exercise your faith. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20, Jesus was talking about, about praying, about removing mountains. And we like passages like this. We go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Uh, I, am, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I had to think about that one for a second. And I think about the close of Romans chapter 8. We are more than conquerors through Him that loves us. And there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. question is, do we truly believe it? Do we believe it? Do we claim it? Do we live that way every single day of our lives? Brethren, I have to admit that there are many days I don't act like I believe it. 
If there is ever anybody that is as self-critical as anybody else, it's right here. And there are many days I can find myself and I'm getting a little, this little pity party that I've just got to jerk myself out of. Then I get into the whole routine. Oh me, what is the day going to come to? And what is, how is the week going to come together? And I start getting worried and fretting about how everything's going to come together, making sure the PowerPoints are done, making sure the, the lesson is going the way that it needs to. The classes are right, the radio programs, and I go through all the different things that need to be done, and I start worrying and fretting over everything, and I become anxious, and, and all of a sudden what I'm doing is I'm depending on my own devices rather than trusting that God will be able to help me see the day through. And I've said this on a number of times, and I have to keep reminding myself of it, but for some reason, come the end of the week, it all comes together. It may not have come together the way I anticipated it to, but it all comes together. I must exercise my faith. You must exercise your faith. Jesus said that God takes care of the birds of the heaven. He's also going to take care of you. Do you exercise that faith? You truly have trust that God will take care of you through the thick and through the thin? Or is that just something that we, we say to, you know, kind of give us that little crutch to lean upon? Or do you really tr stand strong in belief of it? It's easy for us to be subtle. It takes faith to be bold. Push through opposition. You can be certain that you are going to experience opposition in this life. If you've ever given anybody else opposition, you can be sure somebody else will give you opposition. By my faith, I'm able to leap over a wall. No matter what is thrown out in front of me, I will be able to be bold. I like this statement from Shakespeare. Boldness, be my friend. And we all give an invitation to boldness that it would be our friend. Folks, we have to trust in God's power. I wanted to share with you um, a young man that I met down at Horizons a couple of weeks ago. It's a young man by the name of Paul Faton. Paul was from Haiti. On Friday night, he spoke to a crowd of teenagers, he himself being a teenager, but very powerful speaker. Some of the things that Paul talked about that night, he pulled out his cell phone that somebody had allowed him to borrow or had given to him for his short stay. It was one of these flip phones. He opened it up one day when he was in the cafeteria and somebody looked at it and said, what is that? And my grandma doesn't even have a phone like that. He said, but I'm blessed. He said, I was walking through the student center and I came across this, this machine. It was brightly colored. And there were a bunch of buttons that had a big Coca-Cola sign on it. I didn't even know what that thing was, he said. Somebody had to show me how to work a vending machine. He said, but I'm blessed. Somebody he doesn't even know of paid for him to fly from Haiti and to travel all the way to Henderson, Tennessee to attend Horizons Future Leaders Camp. He said, I'm blessed. I didn't know I wasn't in first class. I was riding coach, and I was blessed. Paul told us a story about his father. The town that they live in, and I don't remember the town where it was. It's not where our group has gone. It's not Port-au-Prince or anywhere like that. I don't know where this is. There was an orphanage that had 20 children in it. The government decided to shut down the orphanage. The children were not going to have anywhere to go. 
just right back out to the streets. Not an uncommon thing, Paul says, to see four and five year old children out in the streets without any parents or any guardians, without anything to eat. He said, and my father, he said, if God can take care of me, God can help me to take care of 20 kids. He went and he rented a place and put up 20 kids. And God never stopped taking care of him. Their needs were always met. And as Paul stood there talking to a group of teenagers, telling them how much he loved them and how great an experience this was for him to have, to see, to have the clothing that he had, to be able to work a vending machine, to be able to eat until he was beyond satisfaction, to be able to watch movies and to listen to, to music, to, to be able to play games with the others. He said, but when I am home, I'm blessed. Because I see those four and five year old kids out in the streets without anything to eat. And God can use me. Paul was one who spoke as if he was empowered to live a life of boldness rather than to live a life of subtlety. You know, tonight I'm going to come back. We're going to look at Acts chapter 3 and Acts chapter 4. Together we are going to look at some of the events that occurred in the lives of Peter and John and some of the things that you see within them. And one of the most notable things that you will see, and I know some of you won't be back tonight. I wish you would. Is there anything better for you to do than to praise God and worship Him and study from His Word? It might be good for us to have 50% back tonight. And you say, oh, well, I worship God. I was supposed to worship Him. I, I get that. I understand. Can you imagine the richness that it would create in your life if you actually longed to be with God's people? Can you imagine the boldness that it might bolster within yourself? If you actually had a desire to want to worship God at every opportunity. And yes, there are some that I know you won't be permitted that opportunity. But if it came down to the choice between doing something that is not of a spiritual nature and doing something that can actually build you in your relationship with God, which one would you choose? I'm not trying to build numbers up for Sunday night. I want you to grow with me. And I want to grow with you. I don't want to sit idly by a campfire. And I do so often. I want to be able to stand with confidence knowing as 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4 tells me that the God who is in me is greater than those who are in the world. That God is for me and that there is nothing that can be against me. That there is nothing that can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. That's a boldness that I want us to be able to experience together, but we've got to surrender ourselves over to God for Him to empower us.
We say, oh, well, I'm not confident. That's okay because your God is powerful. I'm very timid and it's okay because our God is strong. But I don't have the talents or the ability. It's okay because it is God who is greater than anything and it is He that gives us with the abilities and the strength and the boldness and the confidence to step out into this world and to appear differently than those who are of the world. The apostles were ignorant, they were common, they were uneducated, but when people looked at their lives, they saw boldness. That's the life that we can live. The invitation of the Lord is open. And as for the prayers of the church, give your life over to Jesus, surrendering to Him, confessing that He is Christ, the Son of the living God. Be immersed. Your sins to be washed away. Your life regenerated, raised up to walk in newness of life. If your desire is to answer the Lord's invitation, we give you the opportunity, and you can do that as we stand and sing this song. This has been It Is Written, presented by the Glendale Road Church of Christ. We welcome your visits and communications at any time. Oh, let the ancient words impart.